Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, wait, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoy this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop. But many of you know me as Wise Courtship. Because of my book with a three-step system, it will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. We come together to read over the scriptures, to pray for each other's concerns, and to give some encouragement as we go out of the door. It's a wonderful, wonderful time we have together. And I'm trying to get it down to a half hour if we can, but it's always so good. So make sure you share by touching right down there. Yes, share it on your timeline. If you're on Facebook, you can um, share with individual people. You can make a watch party out of it. If you're watching us via um Twitter, you can tweet it out. If you're watching us via Periscope, you can tweet it out as well. Share with all of your followers and even on Facebook, Twitch. I don't know how you share it, but just go ahead and share it any old way. <laughs> Thank you for watching us. If you're watching us via um, YouTube, listening to us on the podcast, even if you're checking us out on television, yes, indeedy, make sure you share this broadcast because I believe that someone will be blessed by what we have to say. And before we get started, I want to go ahead into the chat box and greet people. Good to see you, Lakeisha. Lakeisha is always here, and I thank God for her. She is my sister. We don't have the same mother, but we are definitely she, uh, uh, we are definitely connected at the hip. And thank you so much for sharing the broadcast. It's so important to do that, guys, because so many people need to hear this message. And it's good to see you, Crystal. Uh, Lakeisha's watching us via Facebook. Crystal, you're watching us via Facebook too as well. Good to see you. Good afternoon. And good morning if you're watching me somewhere else around the world. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to get into this word. Um, and so we're going to read Psalm 7, 14 through 17, Psalm 7, 14 through 17. And I'm going to read the uh, English Standard Version. And then at some point, I'll probably read the Message uh, Bible Version because it's a little, a little comical to me. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to read that. Thank you guys for watching me on my website as well. I see the numbers going up. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you guys for sharing this broadcast so many times. We have literally gone into so many views. I think like a million views when I go back and look at the analytics, which I don't do often. Y'all got to pray for me. I got to do better. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much for sharing this to the point that it has really touched so many people's lives. So Psalm 7, 14 through 17, the English Standard Version reads, Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head. And on his own skull, his violence descends. 
I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the most high. And I just read that in the English standard version. And um, I am so excited to, um, to go over this with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love you too. I love you so much. Thank you. Um, all right. So listen, today we are going to talk about ditch diggers and troublemakers, ditch diggers and troublemakers. So let's go back to the word of God. And I want to read it to you in the message uh, Bible, um, the message Bible, same thing. So if you just have one uh, translation, don't worry about it at all. That's fine. Um, we're going to just read it in the message Bible just to kind of illuminate a little bit for uh, what we just read. Okay. So let's look at verse 14. Look at that guy. He had sex with sin. He's pregnant with evil. Oh, look, he's having the baby, a live baby. See the man shoveling day after day, digging, then concealing his man trap down that lonely stretch of road. Go back and look again. You'll see him in it head first, legs waving in the breeze. That's what happens. Mischief backfires, violence boomerangs. I'm thanking God who makes them, makes things right. I'm singing the fame of heaven high God. That was a different translation, but I tell you, it opens up your eyes to what is going on and what you should be focused on in this word. I don't know if you have um, noticed the theme about God's word. Yes, we do look at how God loves us. And I know a lot of us love to uh, focus on that. Oh, God loves me. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about, about what he does for me, you know, and all of that. And that is true. He does love you and he does have some things in store for you. Good to see you, Dr. Tammy Francis, um, watching us via, via Periscope. Good to see you. Good to see you, sis. And so I'm and good to see you, Tracy. Um, good to see you on today. And also we have uh, the London, the London lovely Janine Cummings. Good to see you watching us from the UK. Good to see you, darling. And so listen, we just got finished reading for those who are just coming in or may not have heard me. We've just finished reading Psalm 7, 14 through 17. And today we're going to talk briefly about ditch diggers and troublemakers, ditch diggers and troublemakers. What I was saying is that the Bible um, has a running theme. And yes, the running theme is that God loves us. Of course, that is one of the running themes, one of the most important running themes, and that we should love him. We should be in relationship with him. But I think sometimes we stop it. Oh, God loves me. And that's all we think about what God does for me. But there's also a running theme that runs through the Bible and it is how we love others and how we treat other people. And when you look at the scripture, Psalm 7, 14 through 17, you see that a wicked man is really plotting evil, thinking about all types of ways that they can hurt other people. And when he does this, he gives birth to lies. Okay. He is, uh, he conceives evil. He's pregnant with mischief. Uh, verse 14 says, and he gives birth to lies. Okay. Whenever you're evil, whenever you are up to no good, you have time to spit out lies. Is anybody going to help me on today? <laughs> You have time to regurgitate lies. Verse 14 says, he makes a pit digging it out. You know, there's a saying that I don't know if everybody says it, but I know an African-American, you know, family, they said that, you know, the ditch that you dig for yourself, <laughs> you the, the ditch that you dig for others will be for yourself. You know, like you just basically you dig in your own grave, you're going to end up falling in it yourself. And so that's what the scripture is bearing out. And I guess that's why the older folks said that they kind of paraphrased what the scripture is saying. You know, this man is digging a pit. He's digging it out, but and he falls into the hole that he has made. We have to be very careful, beloved, of how we treat other people and the ditches that we try to dig for them, the trouble that we try to bring upon their head, because very often it has a, a tendency of boomeranging back and hitting us in the head, okay? Knocking us in the ditch, making a grave for us when we are trying to plot against somebody else. And it may look good for you for a while. 
Oh, nobody's going to help me. Nobody's saying nothing in the chat box. Let me see. Okay, Lakeisha gave me an amen right there. I know I'm talking good. I'm talking better than y'all sharing, honey, and better than y'all giving reactions on today. But let me tell you something. When you plot evil, I know I'm not talking about you guys here who are watching me. That's why I asked you to share because somebody else may need to hear this. But when you dig a ditch for somebody else, you are really dig digging a ditch for yourself. When you spew out evil out of your mouth, it has a tendency of coming back around and being hit, hits you in the head, being spewed at you. The very chance that you say against other people it, it's ironic how people will end up chanting that about you you know you got something to say about somebody's weight and before you know it you getting bigger and bigger yourself it is just amazing but it's just ironic that people don't know this but yet we go to the word of God the unfamiliable word of God the word that does not change just the same yesterday today and forevermore and we see here in Psalm it says that, you know, he makes a pit. Now you can put yourself in the place of he. He makes a pit, digging it out and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief, verse uh, 16, returns upon his own head. The mischief, the things that he's been plotting, the, uh, the evil deeds, the lies, the false testimonies, all of that, that he has, um, he, that he's dug up, that he's tried to, to plot against, it comes back on his own head and on his own skull, his violence descends. Okay. I'm not going to get too much amens on that. Cause you know, sometimes we get a little skirt on that. We, you know, but we say it all the time. You reap what you sow. That's, that's scriptural. If you can reap, if you plant evil, you get evil. If you plant love, you will get love. So you could turn this whole thing around by not planting discord, not planting lies, not plant planting false testimony, not for planting trouble. But if you plant love, you will get love back in return. It's just that simple, boo. It doesn't have to be, you know, sometimes when people hear you reap what you sow, they, they hear a negative connotation. It doesn't have to be negative. It can be positive, but it show sure enough is because whatever you plant is what you're going to get. If you put an apple seed in the ground, dear ones, you're going to get an apple. Okay, it's just not that hard. It's not rocket science. It's something easy to learn. It's something easy to know. And the Bible is showing you here that this is still so. This is still so. And verse 17 wraps it up by saying, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness. See, when it comes to man, sometimes people will do you wrong. But if that's your friend, okay. We have a tendency when our friend and our family and our kin folk, okay, when they do something, we have a tendency to turn our heads. We get in the courtroom and if the person looks like us, we may, we may rule in their favor. If we got problems against a man, we may put him under the jail. Because you know my father left me and ain't no man good. We have a tendency to show favoritism. I've sat in churches where people show favoritism and that should be the last place you show. I've been in families where folks show favoritism. Y'all not going to help me today, but the Holy Ghost is in here. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the people who watch me in the back seats say amen. Okay. <laughs> you, it is impossible to go against God's law. And if you, if he says you will reap what you sow, you will reap what you sow. And God's law is justice. It is not just about favoritism. It's not about the fact that you got more money than somebody else, or you look ethnically correct in a particular culture. In some cultures, you got to be white. In some cultures, you got to have big eyes. In some cultures, you got to have big lips. In some cultures, you got to have the most money. And we tend to go with what the favorite is of the culture. But in this scripture, we find in verse 17 that the psalmist says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness because God is righteous and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the most high. This is why we, this is why we bless God because God is the maker and creator of all things. God is just, God is holy. He doesn't flake on and flake off. He's not wishy-washy. I love my my mother. My mother's a God 
God-fearing woman, okay? And she is, most of the time, she is 100% right. And even if she was always right, she still is not God. She's not omniscient. She's not uh, 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 omnipotent, okay? She's not ever-present, ever-knowing. God. She's not always just. How many times has somebody been disciplined by mama or daddy and it wasn't just? Oh, y'all not going to say amen. Maybe your mother's watching this broadcast. I don't know. But God is just. And that's why we, we bless him because he is the supreme being. I know that some men will try to get up. Some women will try to get up and say, I am the supreme being. But God is the supreme being. So when you're dealing with a ditch digger and you are dealing with a troublemaker, don't you met don't you don't you don't you um don't you mind them <laughs> don't even worry about them you pray you pray for them you pray for yourself you pray for other people and you keep it moving because god is just and he says vengeance is mine saith the lord so they can dig a ditch for you but very often, dear ones, the ditch that they are digging is one that they will fall in because I believe the word of the Lord because it is yes and amen. It may take time. It may not happen when you want it to, but it will always happen because God's word is true. Troublemakers will always pay the price for the trouble that they stir up. Oh, y'all hearing me on today. May God bless that right there. I feel something right there. Hallelujah to the lamb. So we're going to go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Oh, this time is moving. Ooh, this time is moving. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And if you have a prayer request, um, you can go ahead and put the prayer request up. I'm going to start the prayer and um, I will definitely um, pray for you live and on the air. So let's go before the Lord now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We praise you, oh God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We honor you as the one supreme being, the maker and creator of all things. You can do anything, God but fail. God, forgive us for the things that we have done wrong because you said in your word that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you also said that you, if we confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so God, we come before you, you know, asking for forgiveness when we think that the trouble that we've caused or the ditch that we've dug, that we were not going to have any consequences. We ask that you forgive us when we have lost faith, that you would handle any problems that we come across when we've done all we could do that we ought to stand on your word and to believe you. And we believe you, God, even in this troubled world, even with all of the things that are going on that are wrong, oh God, we trust that you still have control and that you will seek vengeance when it's when the time is right. God, we just honor you on today. Anybody thankful? Let me see it in the chat box. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health and bringing us through COVID-19, oh God, keeping us covered as the storm of life passes over, keeping us covered, oh God, as the, the plague goes through this land. God, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for providing for us, even in a pandemic. God, we thank you for elevating us, even in a pandemic. God, we thank you for, for being there for us. We thank you for blessing our children children, our homes, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for covering us, oh God, and keeping us healthy and strong. God, we thank you for every activity of our limbs. We still can use our arms and our legs. And for those of us who are watching who may not be able to use the limbs, God, you've given us an ability to still get around. It may be a wheelchair, maybe other people, oh God, but we give you thanks. If we had 10,000 tongues, God, we couldn't thank you enough. God, we thank you for the ideas. We thank you for the employment. We thank you for the income. We thank you for, um, for the ability to know where we are right now, oh God, in this present time, this present space. God, we thank you for this medium called Facebook. We thank you for Twitter and Twitch and Periscope, oh God. We thank you for the websites, all of these ways that we connect so that we can come corporately to bless your holy name. But truly you are worthy. If you want to bless God, go ahead and bless him right now. God, we honor you 
on today. And now, God, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and put it up through the chat box. God, we pray for all those who are watching this broadcast who may be suffering in any way, oh God, suffering in their finances, suffering in their marriages, suffering in their body, oh God, suffering in their emotions. Some people are watching me and they're afraid. They're just so afraid of everything that's happening on today, everything that's happening around the world. God, comfort them. Uh, bless everyone who's suffering in any way, oh God, any shape, any form. Give them a word, oh God. Help them to get a word out of the word of God and help them to stand on that word, help them to believe that word in the name of Jesus, because only you, God, can bring us through. Only you can heal our bodies. Only you can raise the dead. Only you can bring that wayward daughter and son home. And so, God, we bless you, and we believe in you, and we seek you for all of our answers, not the government, not our friends and family, not even our pastor. We seek you. Yes, we go to them for assistance and help and to, and to surround us and undergird us. But ultimately, God, we come to you. God, we bless every, we pray for every mother on this broadcast, every father, every business, oh God, in the name of Jesus, as I look down over this list, every author, everyone who's got a launch of a product or a service, everyone who's um, still searching for employment, God, we pray and touch and agree with them. God, we pray for every person who's moving in and out of states and mobile, those who are in California who have been displaced. God, we pray for them. God, we pray for the president of the United States who's struggling in his health, oh God, his and, and his wife, oh God, and all of the leaders, oh God. We pray wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. God, we pray wisdom over each and every person, wisdom over these world leaders, wisdom over our president, wisdom over the first lady. Somebody say wisdom, wisdom, hallelujah, over every leader and humility that they will humble themselves under you and your teaching and your way and your will. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Because we need people who are going to stand on your word because you are coming and you're coming soon. And you are coming for those who are uh, who love you and who call upon your name, oh God. You are coming soon and very soon and we've got to be ready. And we've got to be found working in your vineyard. And now God, for anyone who was too embarrassed to put their prayer requests up through the chat box. Possibly it was private. It was not meant for others to see. God, we understand that maybe they're watching us on the replay and it'll come later. We touch and agree, God, knowing that your answer, whether it be yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better. Somebody put better in the chat box. It's going to be better than what we've ever expected. And so we put our hand in your hand. We walk alongside you. And sometimes you even have to carry us, oh God. Some of us are wiping back tears even now. But God, we trust you because you are so faithful. And whatever you say, <laughs> I don't care how long it comes. I don't care how long it takes. We know that whatever you say is going to come to pass. It may not look like we're winning, but somebody say, in the end, we win. We bless you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good to see so many of you guys come on. Let me see if I can recognize and uh, recognize you. Let's see, Danielle, good to see you, darling. You know I love you. Winetta, good to see you on today. I think I acknowledge Crystal. Good to see you. Um, Arlene, good to see you. Good to see you on today. I pray you guys are well. Tracy, I believe I recognized you. Um, before I pray. Good to see each and every one. Intercessor, good to see you. Some of you guys are visiting me via Periscope. Some are on Facebook Live. I still haven't got anybody from Twitch to say anything, but I know you're watching. Good to see each and every one of you on today. So listen, I want to leave you guys with a word of encouragement. Somebody, do you need encouragement on today? I tell you, it's a whole lot of stuff going on. It's a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> excuse me, but let me tell you something. God is still able. 
God is still able. You hear me? I, I, you know, I guess I'm so confident and I know so much because first of all, I read his word. That's first of all, but he has been so real in my life. I mean, I've had bullies come against me. I've had uh, opposition come against me, health situations, almost dying, all kind of things, stalkers, every kind of thing. And God has been so faithful. Somebody put faithful in the chat box. God has been so faithful and he will stick stand by his word. Good to see you, a uh, baby shark. Yes, please ask the question in the chat box, darling. God is so faithful. Sometimes, dear ones, we are too busy. Y'all hear me? We are too busy. Good to see you, Judy. We are too busy to realize that God is working. I believe I just said something there. Like God didn't do such and such. And if you would sit your little hind parts down and relax a little bit, you'll find out he answered. That's why sometimes it's good to keep a journal. I'm not a big time writer, you know, even though I got books. Y'all see all them books I got behind me? Yeah, over there. <laughs> that I wrote. But I mean, you know, I'm not like, you know, most writers, they write all the time. That's my husband. And, but it's good to keep a journal, a Thanksgiving journal, you know, what you think thankful for and what you believe in God for, because you know what? We get to forgetting how good God has been to us. We, he's been so good to us. We spoil. Oh my gosh. Y'all not going to hear me. He's so good to some of us. We just so spoiled. Any faithful crystal, won't he work it out? He raised some, I've seen some people, and I'm telling you, this is God, that's true. I've seen some people, because, you know, I used to, um, I don't do it that much here, now here, um, one, the pandemic, but even before then, I do it some, but not as much as I used to, um, maybe because I'm busy and I'm traveling all the time, but I remember someone had cancer, and I was by, by their bedside praying for them and all this kind of stuff, and the Lord delivered them. And I mean, they didn't have no trace of cancer. It's been over 10 years and they haven't had no trace of cancer or anything. And they promised faithfully they were going to go to church. Now, you ain't promising me nothing. Because they don't make me no never mind if you cut a child. I'd like to see you. But I mean, life goes on, right? You making that promise to God. And honey, they go maybe one Sunday and you don't see them no more. You know, and we forget all about how God has blessed us. Oh, my goodness. And then I remember one guy got thrown out of a window and he uh, on his head and he was in a coma. And they said he was going to die. And, oh, you know, he would never. And if he did come out, he wouldn't know who, who he was. And he would basically be a vegetable. And um, he came out of it. He was not a vegetable. God blessed him. And I mean, you see him around for a while. And the next thing you know, they not, they not, they don't even know the Lord, honey. They don't even know how to say Jesus. They don't know how to say anything. Listen, I'm not, don't be before you say I'm judging. You know, I'm just stating the facts. Because see, some of us be too cute with that. Don't judge. No, I'm gonna teach you straight. Sometimes we forget about God. He blessed us. Can I get some amens up in here? He blessed us and we forget. But don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. God has been good. Some of y'all prayed for a house. You got the house. You said hallelujah. And you you were right. You hallelujah. You praised them. And then you know life goes on. You're not like you don't care about it. But then you you don't think about how hard you prayed for that. Blessed you with a spouse and you forgot how hard you prayed for that. Blessed to protect you in a pandemic. And now you done got you, we done got used to the pandemic. <laughs> You know, oh, life is good. We, you know, but we don't realize God is bringing us through the pandemic. We got to thank God and we got to hold these things dear and realize that God is answering prayers all the time. He's still in the blessing business. Okay, I know you may want to get a car and you you feel like you want to you want to win this and you want to win that. And, and he, I'm going to really be blessed when I lose these 20 pounds and stuff. But the very fact that you woke up this morning, oh, my God is a blessing and proof that God still answers prayers. And if you open your eyes and you watch, even in the news, even in your neighborhood, even in your home, even in your workplace, wherever you go, you will see that God has been answering prayers. And that's good to know because he's faithful. He may not do it when you want him to, but he's always on time and he's always just. 
Well, I got to go. We talked about ditch diggers and troublemakers. And if you missed it, you want to go back and watch this. <laughs> This is Tony Henderson Mayers. I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control. God is still on his throne. He's still in control. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video.